Okay, um, so today, uh, sh let me do a self introduction. Uh, I'm Siran from an uh, open source group of Samsung Research UK. Today, I also have my teammate, uh, Phil, uh, is going to, Phil Conwell, he's joining me. Phil is based in France, and I'm based in the UK. So, in today's talk, we're going to talk about our practice in the lab on how we bring JavaScript into Internet of, uh, Internet of Things from embedded device to smart gateway. So, start the talk. We, I will just, you know, just briefly discuss why we chose JavaScript in Internet of Things. And then we go further, talk about the challenges we're facing to bring JavaScript into uh, IoT. And first we look at uh, to bring JavaScript in embedded, uh, in embedded devices. Then at this point, we're going to introduce, introduce you JavaScript, an uh, ultra light uh, JavaScript engine developed in Samsung. And then we look at the two very popular IoT uh, platforms, which actually build on top of JavaScript. The IoT platform will provide direct JavaScript APIs to developers. So the challenges on the gateway side is a lot less, thanks to the Node.js uh, framework. Then after we have the, we introduce you the JavaScript engine and uh, uh, the gateway, which actually we have chosen Mozilla Things gateway. So we're going to put them together, show you a simple demo, see how you can make a very simple end-to-end -end IoT system in using these two platforms. And after demo, Phil is going to introduce you the web of things technology we've been using this demo. And then he's going to go further. So he's going to show you some very exciting light demos. So he's going to show you how to control your sens his sensor actually at home, how to control it from here remotely. So why JavaScript in IoT? Well, can I ask how many of you consider yourself as JavaScript developers? Well, pretty much, I would say more than half. Yes, that's what we, that's the main reason, one of the main reasons we're choosing JavaScript is popularity. So according to the Stackflow annual survey, well, for the fifth year in a row, last year, 2018, for the fifth year in a row, JavaScript is a top language choice for developers. So the other thing is maturity. The, the, uh, the language itself and the, you know, like frameworks around it are maturing. And uh, productivity. Uh, because JavaScript is, quite, uh, JavaScript is open standard, language itself is very OS and, uh, and the platform independent. Also, there are big, vast third party libraries around. So what does this mean? I, I think you probably got it. So actually, it probably very likely means that you actually take less time to bring, introduce your introduct, introduce your products to market. So it all sounds very good. I mean, JavaScript sounds so good. But then we have to bear in mind that JavaScript is actually a scripting language. So we see it running in web on the end server, back end server, um, thanks to Node.js. But then in IoT, you know, in IoT there are a lot, uh, you know, heavily de embedded uh, devices. So how do you have a JavaScript running like a, with a constrained device which has a, you know, very limited uh, CPU, memory, and the resources? So, yeah, we, this is diagram actually so like uh, the thing gateway could be the RAM could be like a 2 KB, which is quite a pretty minimum. Obviously, it can go high-end, like a 1 gig. But most of them will see like a 32 K KB, 64 KB, or something like that. So we here comes the ultralight JS engine, Jerry script by Samsung. So the name of Jerry actually came from Tom and Jerry. So we're thinking like, a, you know, very smart, fast, yeah. So, JavaScript basically focuses on devices, which actually um, 
memory says from 32 KB to 256 KB. So, I mean, because you, you're thinking that you're having a JavaScript engine running it, you do need a, a reasonable memory size. But this, this actually, this engine is really ultra light at this moment because uh, the RAM says, it obviously, as like we said, it can, you probably look at 32 to 64. This is the minimum. And then uh, ROM, you look at 200 KB. Also, we actually have this um, binary compiled for uh, ARM SUM2, which is uh, around 160 KB, and actually can actually further in, in reduce to 140 KB at this moment. So we mentioned that uh, initially developed from scratch by Samsung in 2014, and uh, in 2016, it's actually transferred to JS Foundation. How many of you are aware of JS Foundation? Oh, that, that's great, that's great, yes. Uh, under JS, JS Foundation, we have about, uh, at this moment, about 31 project, so all JavaScript project. So we do recommend if you're a JS de uh, developer, go there and have a look. You might find something re in really interesting. From IoT point of view, I would say like uh, Node Red is quite, uh, it's a quite a relevant, good tool. So at this moment, I mean the engine is very self-contained, it's very portable. And uh, API is, uh, is, uh, is very mature. So you can, you can have the engine run its on its own. But the engine, the API from the engine is the C API. So what's next is uh, for, developer, for JavaScript developers, they want JavaScript, uh, de develop, they want JavaScript APIs directly. So here we have, uh, oh yes, yeah, sorry, I haven't finished. So yes, optimization and performance has been very top of priorities and uh, their new features keep on going. And the community really in the last few years just developed so fast. Rather than, you know, not only the Samsung developers uh, are being active, also we have like uh, committers from uh, Intel ARM. So this actually means that a lot more uh, OS and uh, board, you know, physical hardware support. So this is a list of the hardware we can find. You can find the initial supporting code on uh, GitHub. And the product. So this is a um, uh, Fitbit uh, Ionic, uh, Ionic um, uh, smartwatch, uh, which actually released last year, which is more significant to JavaScript is actually has a, using JavaScript as a platform for development. Yes, now I'll come back to IoT platforms. There are two main platforms. One is LTGS, which actually very, very closely coped with uh, JavaScript because it, they also, this one is also developed by, by Samsung. And the hardware support, of course, is very much in line. And the, the, main, the main thought, the main uh, philosophy behind LT.js is uh, basically do a small version, not JS. So the when we develop, uh, when the team developed, they're actually trying to make a uh, small, make this small, also backward compatible with uh, Node.js, which means that a lot of code you're using IoT.js API developed, you can run in IoT in Node.js environment, uh, environment without any modification. Well, assuming that the modules also, you know, you're supporting. So the other one is uh, Zephyr.js uh, by Intel. This is very tailored to the vendor, actually. So it's tailored on, the, uh, on Intel Zephyr OS. Uh, and also uh, the, uh, the board, the physical board support is also uh, quite a limited number. And the, physic, the, the philosophy, as we said, also similar. We want to be portable between this uh, embedded IoT JS platform to Node.js. So let's have a look at uh, uh, JavaScript and, and Smart Gateway. In our case, we use the, the Things Gateway from a Mozilla project. So we have a, uh, Mozilla actually has a Things uh, Cloud, which actually basically just try to make a, a gateway is collaborating in different uh, geography area work together. And we have things, uh, things framework. I think later when we look, talk about um, web things uh, APIs, you probably have a more better idea. And then we have a gateway. So this is the architecture of, um, uh, for gateway. So 
Initially, the prototype for Gateway was actually based on Node.js. And uh, later, they actually introduced the concept of adapter, which is a language adapter. So it had a support for Rust and other languages. Uh, so at the, at the back end, as we, know, as we mentioned earlier, it's actually based on Node.js. The gateway basically actually claim that uh, there's some uh, good security and authorization or, uh, or, or authentication scheme. Once so you have the uh, the feature, basically like uh, we do have a HTTPS, so backward tunnel uh, using uh, PageCat and the OAuth uh, framework. Then for authentication, so JSON, JSON Web Token is actually this method is used. Obviously, you have, have other choices. So now we introduce you to JavaScript, we introduce you to uh, Mozilla Gateway. Let's put it together and see a simple demo. So this demo I used uh, in my, one of my talk last year in July, but I think it's uh, such a good simple demo, I actually present uh, pretty much a pr uh, cover the framework and the technology we talk today. So I'm just uh, give a quick uh, talk on this. So on the demo, basically we have a Raspberry Pi uh, Zero running uh, Raspbian and uh, uh, no, Raspbian JavaScript LTGS, and then we actually have this uh, blink T light. So it's actually an array of eight LEDs, very bright light. Uh, it's, a, it's actually a Raspberry hat, so you can hang on the uh, GPL uh, pins. So the kit itself actually provides the add-on, so basically uh, club hand add-on, which actually detects the audio input. So what we have, we have is we basically program the blink -t light as a web thing using the web thing API proposed by Mozilla Gateway, uh, Mo Mozilla IoT team. So it's a quite, it's a, there is some uh, similarity with this uh, web things API with uh, W3C API to have a check, you know. And um, so this one we have this web thing, we, we program blink -t as a web thing which actually is recognized and can communicate with the uh, uh, Things Gateway. So this, uh, in Things Gateway, we actually uh, also configure a rule. Basically, what, what the rule is very simple. They, they provide this UI, so which means that they actually, what you do is you, you can configure rules between add-ons and the things. So the add-on basically is uh, clap hands add-on. So our rule is uh, when you clap hands and then you turn the thing on off. So next one actually is a, is a video. Uh, I'm not going to show it today because uh, they're very exciting. Light them, light them later. So if you're interested, do do go to our um, do to I actually upload this into YouTube. You can also check from my slide anyway. Look at let's look at how it works from the. Raspberry Pi side, we have Raspbian, just JavaScript, LT.js. Because we, uh, the, the link, Blink T light is talking to GPL uh, pins, so I need to have a GPL module built in. So this actually, at that point, I need to mention that LT.js actually provides quite a few built in modules and extension modules. So built in modules also quite a similarity, try to follow the line. Node.js is doing like a event file, those modules. And, uh, then we have WebSync IoT.js. This is the base code on, uh, to support WebSync APIs in IoT.js environment. So this one, I think uh, Phil is going to talk a lot more details on it. And on the top of it, we actually program the, program the thing. So yeah, that's it. So I would like to hand it to Phil to talk to you more about WebSync's API. Thanks. So here it go. Here it is. So this is my smart home in the box, <laughs> and uh, this is a WebSync dry, um, Mozilla dashboard where you have all the devices connected. So uh, there is a couple of sensor and uh, actuator. So where is my? Here I can decide to turn on the the light, uh, to change the color because there's different properties. So every thinks, hey, we missed something. I didn't explain uh, the source code. 
So we only have 10 minutes, so let me back to the code. I will make the demonstration just after. Um, is your, where is uh, your screen? Uh, okay. I need to go back to the presentation. Sorry for the confusion. So yeah, what are web things? Basically, they are um, HTTP server, no more complicated than that, than that. And they're all connected to the gateway using a REST API. So it's not a peer-to-peer -peer model where you have different things talking together. Everything is decided by the gateway. And um, there are different um, ontology, but it's quite simple. This is basically just properties of, uh, describing different things. They are using JSON description, and it's uh, following a, a schema, which is a, a specification on proposal on at uh, W3C. And uh, you can implement it in a different language, but uh, we are in the JavaScript room, so it's JavaScript time. So I made a, a fork of the actual um, Node.js module made to build the web thing, but I made it, uh, I simplified it to make it running on IoT.js, which is similar to Node.js, but uh, with less advanced feature, you have only ECMAScript 5.1 uh, support, so you need to transpile and eventually adapt. A couple of features have been um, removed, but the basics is working uh, the same. So that's <coughs> the cool thing, is that if you deploy using IoTGS on, let's say, Linux, and you want to deploy to a microcontroller, this is actually the same code, only the, the engine is in changing, of course. So if you want to do IoT, you have support for all kind of input-output and uh, uh, some uh, connectivity feature like HTTP, HTTPS, and a couple of other modules like a WebSocket, which is quite interesting for real time, and um, yeah, MQTT and so on. So if you want to implement uh, it, I try to make it the shorter possible. So maybe it will not compile, but you get the idea. So a thing is, is defined by a, a name. So here is some sensor. Then I had a, a, I create a server and I assign this thing to a server, and then I can just open a, a request on the, on the, my host name and I got the description of the of the thing. So what we have here is a thing without any properties. So not very useful, but you can uh, from the gateway you can scan uh, you can add it by IP and then it will display a, a widget on your screen. So the next uh, step is um, adding a property. So here is a simple one. I made a, a, couple, a color sensor. So a color is uh, in a web domain described as a string. So when we create the property, so here I'm inheriting property. So this is not modern JavaScript, but uh, uh, it's quite simple because it's only two lines. So I, I assign a, a value to my property, which is a color. Here it's black. And I need to add some semantics to describe if this is a matching the color property uh, model in the schema from Mozilla. And uh, obviously it's a read-only value because uh, you cannot change the sensor value. Okay. And um, uh, then, if you make a request uh, to uh, the, uh, the host name, you have the description of the property, and you have a different endpoint. So let's go on. Now, so this is the same example. I try to s make it uh, smaller. So if we are creating a, a, a this sensor, this property is uh, reflecting the value of a sensor object. We can be a simulator of a real sensor. We have just a uh, an event function, which is on reading, which is updating the value by this uh, notify exception uh, external update. And then th from the UI, you have uh, the matching color, which is updated. So, so if we make the request explicitly from command line on a different endpoint, I have a JSON describing the color. So it's no more complicated than this. I'm pretty sure you are doing more advanced uh, JavaScript uh, development. But you uh, can run this on a microcontroller. So Let's go now back to the demonstration. Um, oh, where it is? Okay. So yeah, so what I explained this today, just before, and uh, here are the sensors, the value, and the 
the smartness is uh, in this uh, tool, which can be useful to create uh, some logic between uh, different elements. So for instance, I created one, uh, let's say, oh, it's quite difficult to control the, so let's say I'm using at input my temperature sensor. I'm not using Unity, so I'm a bit lost. And uh, I can de decide to connect to, let's say, my light over here. And say that if the property of the temperature is above a threshold, let's say, oh, I'm sorry because I didn't. Uh, so if it's above, let's say, 10 degrees, then there is some event going. So something I can show also is that um, on my dashboard, I have also made uh, something which is not real uh, IoT, but I made a, what is it? Uh, a mastodon actuator. So everyone knows the difference between a sensor and an actuator. That's simple. A sensor is reading a value, and an actuator is doing an action. So the one I created here is uh, something that uh, just uh, sends something to the mastodon network. So I compose them. And it will be updated in a couple of seconds. <coughs> Here it is. So let's say the use case I have with this flower is uh, when my uh, flower is out of water, I'm sending a notification to my neighbor that uh, it should water my flower because when I'm speaking on conference, I could not care of it. And uh, no, I also shared the can what I cannot show you more. Um, yeah, I have also some sensor here. Uh, which is uh, not connected to my home, but it's in my city. So where it is? Do you see a uh, air quality sensor? Okay, four. So this is a level of. Uh, okay, time is up. Let's go. So yeah, I'm here in Rennes, and I have a, a sensor which is measuring the air quality. So where is it? Um, well, it is somewhere. And uh, anyway, the value, OK, I will find it by clicking. But if you have any questions, you can prepare them now. OK, here it is. So here is my home under the lake. So the value is 4. And I should find it again here. So you can uh, imagine all kinds of use cases of interaction between device you staying in your home and things on the internet and everything is possible it's flexible so sorry i'm out of time um, if you have any question feel free to most ask uh, here on the outside and on irc in the mozilla iot channel thank you very much thank you.